fans have taken a notice of Max Caster's bizarre tweets as of late on social media, and everybody is now wondering, is Max Caster trying to get himself fired? We will go over the bizarre behavior of Max Caster's online behavior right here on Off The Script. Also, Sami Zayn getting online backlash following the gauntlet match from Monday Night Raw as most fans wanted Gable and not Zayn. We'll go over that as well. And a ridiculous report from Dave Meltzer in regards to Triple H and how Triple H didn't realize Will Ospreay's ability in the ring and on the microphone. You gotta be kidding me. All this plus so much more right here on Off The Script. We'll start off with Triple H and Will Ospreay following his AEW debut. Many people, including those in WWE, believed Triple H missed out by not signing Will Ospreay. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. I don't know why they didn't make more of a push to bring Will Ospreay in to WWE. Will Ospreay had interest from plenty of promotions bidding for his services, including WWE, AEW, and TNA Wrestling. Reportedly, it was rumored that TNA offered him over a million dollars per year to join TNA. He opted, obviously, to sign with AEW. An announcement was made official at Full Gear in November, with him starting full-time at Revolution in what will go down as probably one of the best matches of the entire year, where he wrestled Konosuke Takeshita. In his debut match, he went over Takeshita, and then on Dynamite, Kyle Fletcher. He will meet Brian Danielson at Dynasty next month in St. Louis, their new pay-per-view concept. While speaking on The Observer, Dave Meltzer recapped Osprey's promo on Wednesday night, which was fantastic, noting that he heard from people who felt Triple H didn't consider Osprey a promo guy, but rather a really good wrestler. Osprey has been knocked in the past for cursing a lot in his promos. Before I even get into what Dave Meltzer had to say about this ridiculous notion... I want to reiterate this again, noting that Meltzer heard from people who felt Triple H didn't consider Osprey a promo guy, but rather a really good wrestler. I think that's the majority of the fan base. A lot of people, including myself, didn't realize how emphatic and enthusiastic Will Osprey was as a promo. We all knew he was one of the best wrestlers in the world, but I think the majority of people who know pro wrestling and know who Will Ospreay is consider him a, consider him a very good wrestler and not much of a promo guy. He's more of a wrestler than he is a promo guy. Why is that news? I think that's pretty much a common theme amongst everybody else. Meltzer says this, and I quote, he started just a couple of weeks ago, 11 days ago, whatever it is, 10 days ago. And he's like getting this kind of reaction. I know people in WWE when this was going down, it was becoming very clear that he was going to AEW and not WWE. They offered him a lot less money. And I know people that were going like he, Triple H, didn't realize about Will Ospreay. They knew, but he, Triple H, just didn't realize. He just thought he was one of those great workers, but this guy has a chance to be. We'll see. As far as the complete package, there's very few people you know as far as the complete total package, Meltzer said in regard to Will Ospreay. The point of the matter is, I'm sure Triple H would love to have Will Ospreay on the WWE roster. But WWE, Triple H, you know, he can only go as far as the budget will take him. Triple H has bosses that he has to answer to. Triple H has The Rock to answer to. Triple H has Mark Shapiro 
to answer to. Ari Emanuel, Nick Khan, those are the money guys. Triple H's position is chief content officer, meaning Triple H creates whatever you see on television. That's it. Triple H has only a very little say in regards to what everybody's going to be making as far as their contract in WWE. You don't think Triple H wanted Will Ospreay? Does Nick Khan know who Will Ospreay is? Does The Rock know who Will Ospreay is? Does Mark Shapiro and Ari Emanuel know who Will Ospreay is? I doubt it. They might have heard of him, but I don't think those names are familiar with Will Ospreay's body of work. Most of us here in the States are not familiar who watch AEW and that type of wrestling. Most of us don't know to the full extent of Will Ospreay's, you know, catalog. We know how great he is, clearly. And we're starting to see how great he can be. But WWE was not going to shell out the type of money that Tony Khan was for Will Ospreay based on, oh man, he's a great pro wrestler. They will now realize, they will now realize what they missed out on. And it's not like Will Ospreay is old enough where this is going to be his last run. This is why AEW is so important to everybody that says, I can't wait for AEW to die. These people on social media, day in and day out, wanting AEW to fucking die. If AEW dies, then Will Ospreay never makes it to the big leagues. Ever. WWE will now look at Will Ospreay and what he does on AEW television, and then when he's done after three years, Will Ospreay will then go back and renegotiate make even more money, and WWE will now give him the money that you thought they should have given him in the first place. They will now know how great Will Ospreay is, not only in the ring and on the microphone, and they will want Will Ospreay even more so. So now Will Ospreay is in AEW for three years, creating and giving us the best of him now, which will ultimately yield him bigger and better when WWE wants him in the next three years. That's how the game works. WWE would love to have Will Ospreay, but for the amount of money that Tony Khan was offering Will Ospreay now, WWE couldn't do it. WWE couldn't do it. Tony Khan has an unlimited bank account. This man is throwing money at everybody any way he can. And one of the reasons why he threw so much money at Will Ospreay and Okada and Mercedes and whoever else becomes a free agent, it's because guys like that, Ospreay and Okada, Tony Khan, his heart cannot see wrestlers like this go to WWE because he feels that they belong on a roster that Tony Khan has assembled Tony Khan right now takes great pride in assembling the greatest professional wrestling roster potentially of all time. That's where he believes they should be. And Tony Khan will pay to see that happen. Everything that they've lived for and worked for up until this point, you think Tony Khan's going to allow them to walk into WWE and have everything that they've done previously just wiped away for sports entertainment? It's not going to be the case. Triple H wants Will Ospreay. Triple H will eventually get Will Ospreay. But right now, we enjoy him in AEW. I don't think Triple H went in blind. I think Triple H and his team of William Regal and everybody else that he's assembled around him know exactly how good Will Ospreay is and what Will Ospreay would bring to the table. I think this report from Meltzer is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Moving on. Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn got online heat. Following Monday Night Raw and the gauntlet match, which saw him crowned as the new number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, he gets the shot at Gunther at WrestleMania 40. Raw ended well for Sami Zayn, won the gauntlet match, and according to Booker T, it wasn't all sunshine and roses for Sami Zayn. On the latest episode of the Hall of Fame podcast, Booker T, who felt that Zayn winning was the correct decision, Revealed Zayn had mixed emotions about the win as the two discussed it on the flight back from Raw. The reason was due to Zayn believing the fans were upset 
due to him defeating Gable, who had long been pursuing a rematch against Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Booker T says this, We were flying out to Orlando, and we were sitting next to each other on the plane. I swear so many people were pulling for Chad Gable, and Sammy, I said, man, what a match. What a match. You're going to look back on this one one day and say, this is the one. This is the one that catapulted me to the next level. This is the one that put me in the light. Let them see exactly what I can do. And he was like literally upset about the online heat that he got from fans. He was like, man, I thought the fans loved me. And the next thing you know, I see all this stuff. I said, man, you can't listen to all that white noise. You got to think about how great that match was. And you're going to look back on it and say, man, that was really some great work that I did. But he still, like I said, was feeling that he let someone down just because the fans didn't think the match was as good as I thought it was, end quote. Now, did WWE make the right decision? I mean, that's clearly up for interpretation. It's a very subjective topic. You're going to have people that thought Chad Gable was the right choice. You're going to have people that say Sami Zayn was the right choice. The reason why WWE went with Sami Zayn is because Sami Zayn is the bigger guy. He's the bigger name. He's going to generate more interest in a match against Gunther than Chad Gable would at this time. The reason why WWE didn't go with Chad Gable right now, even after all the great vignettes that we started to see just recently, is because WWE, after September and their last match, basically killed Gable off. He wasn't on television They focused more on Maxine Dupree, Otis, and Akira Tozawa in the Alpha Academy. Gable, when he wrestled on Raw, would lose and lose and lose. And then all of a sudden, all because it's WrestleMania season, and here's a big one, all of a sudden, because Brock Lesnar is no longer in the WrestleMania plans, Chad Gable was an afterthought. Chad Gable was only used because they needed something different for Gunther at WrestleMania because the plans with Lesnar were not going to go on as planned. So if you guys sit down and think about it for just a little bit, the original plan from September all the way up through the Royal Rumble, right before the Royal Rumble when things really got chaotic with Vince McMahon and Janelle Grant and all that stuff, from September all the way up until January, it was Gunther and Lesnar. At WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship, Sami Zayn were not in the plans, and Chad Gable were not in the plans. So if you think of it that way, then yeah, WWE, they didn't expect Brock Lesnar to be ousted by Janelle Grant in this lawsuit with Vince McMahon. So they had no choice. They went one way, left Gable on the sidelines, maybe to revisit it some other time, And then they pivoted, there's everybody's favorite word, to Gable and Zayn. And they ultimately gave it to Sami Zayn. Now, I want you guys to look at it a different way. If Gable loses to Gunther at WrestleMania, where does he go? Maybe they didn't want to beat Chad Gable. Maybe they have bigger plans for Chad Gable. Sami Zayn can take a loss and he'll bounce right back and everybody will be pro Sami Zayn after he loses to Gunther. At WrestleMania. The original plan was Lesnar and Gunther at WrestleMania, and Lesnar was going to lose. So no matter what the plans are for Gunther at WrestleMania, the plan was always for him to walk out of WrestleMania with the Intercontinental Championship. No matter if it's Lesnar, no matter if it's Zayn, and no matter if it's Gable. Why do we want Gable in a match where the outcome, as of the original plans, was always Gunther? Don't really understand why everybody's crying over it. You don't think Chad Gable's going to get another opportunity? Chad Gable clearly is going to get another opportunity. Sami Zayn's going to lose. Sami Zayn's going to bounce back. Sami Zayn may revisit Gunther at some other point when he's the world heavyweight champion and retell this story all over again going into next year's Rumble or next year's Mania. Gable may get a match on the Raw after Mania for all we fucking know. Maybe WWE wants Gunther to go into the international PLEs in France And in Berlin with the Intercontinental Championship. You know, I was one of the few people who have already pitched. Maybe Gunther doesn't lose 
Maybe Gunther remains IC champion while winning the World Heavyweight Championship at the same time, only to give it up because WWE doesn't want to pin him. Why are we giving Sami Zayn online heat? I don't understand it. People tend to take this thing a little bit too seriously, as if it affects their lives. Stop. Gunther is not losing the Intercontinental Championship. It doesn't matter if it's Zayn or Gable. He's not losing the IC title. He's walking out of WrestleMania still your greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. Max Caster. We'll end with this one. Max Caster has had controversial tweets over the last four days or so. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. But it only looks one way to me. And it looks like Max Caster is trying to get fired. AEW champion, trios champion, if you even want to call them a champion, they're non-existent and irrelevant. Max Caster started by saying he doesn't want Shelton Benjamin in the company. Shelton Benjamin is being rumored and linked to AEW. I'd welcome Shelton Benjamin into AEW. Absolutely. Max Caster says we don't need him. Taking to Twitter, Max Caster responded to a report that AEW had held talks with Shelton Benjamin, writing, we don't want him. This kicked off an extended back and forth between Caster and AEW fans on X. Now, it's unclear as to if Caster's social media behavior is part of a storyline. It very well could be. I don't know what the storyline is. We just saw on Dynamite that the Bullet Club split from the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, cementing that they are heels and the acclaimed are baby faces. So if Max Caster was going heel, then this could be a part of a storyline. But right now, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Are they splitting the acclaimed up? Is Max Caster going solo? I don't know what good that would do. That would be fucking terrible. They're better together than they would be separate. Again, I don't think from the surface, this is part of a storyline. This past January, the acclaimed linked up with Bullet Club Gold to form a super faction called the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, while these two trios, champions, originally joined forces to fight the Undisputed Kingdom. They have not, they have not interacted with Adam Cole's lead stable at all since they were targeted before the devil revealed. Fans have criticized the booking of the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, labeling the group directionless and blaming it for holding Jay White back a former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion in his own right, and someone who's headlined Wrestle Kingdom. AEW has seemingly begun to plant the seeds of dissension, which we saw basically blow up on Dynamite. The Bullet Club are back, and the Bang Bang Scissor Gang is dead. Within his tweets, Caster also claimed he was suspended last week and that his Twitter was hacked. He says this on social media. From Max, hello, users of X. My followers, my former followers and wrestling fans. While I was asleep, I was hacked by a hacker. That person proceeded to correspond antagonizing messages to you. The fans. They caused a lot of problems that I would never intend to start. Ironically, I stand behind all of the opinions and statements made by my hacker, and I will not be deleting the posts. However, rest assured that I have full control over my account once again, Thank you for understanding, humbly, the best wrestler alive. That's what he tweeted. And then on the night, or the day, that Mercedes Monet was supposed to debut with AEW, which, in fact, she did on Wednesday's Dynamite Big Business, Max Caster posted this picture of him and Sammy Guevara calling Sammy Guevara a great guy. Sammy Guevara had to undergo sensitivity training because of comments he made well before he joined AEW in regards to Sasha Banks. I don't really remember what the context were of the comments that Sammy Guevara made, but they were, I believe, talking about her looks and how beautiful of a woman she is, and Sammy Guevara made some very obscene and off-color comments in regards to what he'd like to do to Sasha Banks. Because of how hot she looked. He underwent sensitivity training. And he had to go through all of that. And currently right now is suspended for not following concussion protocol. 
in a match that he had with Jeff Hardy, which led to Jeff Hardy getting concussed off of a top rope move that Sammy Guevara administered. I don't know why you would even do that on the night where it was supposed to be all about Mercedes to drum up social media negativity on a night that is supposed to be celebrated by the company. I don't know if this is part of a storyline, part of a gimmick change, part of a split or not. I don't really see it being part of a, of a storyline because the Bullet Club went heel and the acclaimed were attacked by Bullet Club on Wednesday. So clearly it's not part of a storyline. It's the acclaimed splitting up. Why would we split up Max Cash and leave Anthony Bowens all by himself? That, that would render both of them dead in the water on this roster. They are better as a tag team than they are separated. Maybe he's trying to voice his frustration and get fired from AEW by doing something that AEW is closely monitoring now, and that's everybody's online social media behavior. I don't really, I don't really understand it. Is he upset about what's going on with the acclaimed creative? Probably. This was the hottest tag team in the entire company, hottest tag team in the entire wrestling industry. Foam fingers, scissoring, chance. They had everybody eating out of the palm of their hands, and then they died. This bang, bang, scissor gang shit didn't help matters either. So what exactly is going on? Why post a picture of Sammy Guevara on the night that Mercedes was debuting, knowing exactly what you're doing, and drumming up bullshit that should already be dead and buried? Why bring negativity to the company when it should be a night and a show that the company celebrates as one of its greatest achievements. You know, CM Punk once said that he works amongst children before an entire post-show media scrum was blown into bits and an online fucking back and forth between AEW wrestlers on social media where everything anybody was talking about. The Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, CM Punk, who said this, who said that, reports of this, reports of that. We're supposed to be moving on from all of that dark cloud. Meanwhile, we got guys like Max Caster here basically bringing social media negativity and childish-like bullshit to social media while he's still employed with AEW. For what reason, I don't know. Maybe it is part of a storyline. I'm not seeing it right now. As far as, for, from what I'm seeing, I think it's fucking childish bullshit. And I think he should honestly stay off social media if this is the behavior that he's going to put out there in the universe. It's not entertaining. It's not funny. It's not interesting. Maybe they both need to go back to the drawing board and come up with something a little bit more interesting. Guys, thank you very much for all your support. If you did enjoy today's episode, please let me know what you think down below. Comment section is yours. Let me know what you think of all the top stories here today discussed on Off The Script. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Let's try for 1,000 likes on tonight's video. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. And if you guys want the complete, in-depth thought and opinion of what we thought of Mercedes Monet debuting with AEW, our Dynamite Post Show is now live on the channel. Go and check that out right now on the homepage. Guys, thank you so very much. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206 on X, and I'll see you guys live after Friday Night SmackDown right here on Off The Script. I'll see you guys later.